Hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Celebrities. My name is Kimberly Scott, former video girl and now podcast rookie. Industry Celebrities is a podcast where my friends in all sorts of industries allow me to ask them questions in discussion format about their passions or their industries. Makes them all celebrities to me. If you'd like to share your knowledge of your industry and be on Industry Celebrities Podcasts, please email me at Kimberly at MarketingDoer.com. And you can listen to other episodes by searching Kimberly D. Scott in iTunes for all you iPhone users, Anchor and Spotify for all you Android users, and good old YouTube. Okay, please welcome today's guest, the drum roll, Brittany Posternock, BP. Hi, Kimberly. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Hi. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Okay. So my three discussion questions for you today. Really easy. Are you scared? Yes. (laughs) You shouldn't be. (laughs) Okay. They're very easy. So the first one would be, how long have you been in the user experience design industry? I switched careers about a year ago. So this time last year, I was graduating from a program at General Assembly and have been in UX design since then. And what made you decide to go into UX design? So I was looking for a career change, always wanted to be a designer. Um, It was something that kind of stuck with me. And as I met designers, I was so interested in what they were doing. So I began to research different design fields and started to look into graphic design and interior design. So as I started to look into these fields, I decided I wanted to be a graphic designer and was working with a career counselor at the time. And she very politely told me that I didn't want to be a graphic designer. (laughs) Why do you think she told you that in the polite way that she did? She said that it's a tough industry and that it was hard to get into and that the income that I wanted to make throughout my career was not that of a graphic designer. So from there... That's good advice. Yeah. (laughs) That she was honest with you? Yeah, I was very happy she told me that. And it was funny because I had gone to Atlanta and really just met with some graphic designers, interior designers, and I was very excited about knowing that I wanted to be a graphic designer. And so to come back and to have someone that in my excitement could still tell me, hey, this isn't the right career for you was a blessing. Yes, always. Good for you for listening or at least weighing all the information that you got to make your right decision. So... Yeah, I was. that's kind of the mindset I was in. And so she didn't really know much about UX design, only had heard really the terms UX and UI and told me to go to start research it. So that's what I did. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. You learn everything on YouTube. <laughs> and read a lot of articles and ultimately figured out that user experience design is a place where business strategy problem solving, and design meet. And when I figured that out, it was kind of like a light bulb went off because my previous background was in customer service and strategy, and that took a lot of problem solving, which I really, really loved. So So this was just another chapter in your life and something new to learn that would include customer service and problem solving. Totally. Yeah. It just built off what kind of I was already doing and took a new perspective to solve problems. Okay. So give listeners the definition from the category that you're in. Of user experience design. Mm -hmm. So it's not a short answer, (laughs) (laughs) but it's Primarily research-based web design. That being said, user experience design also stems outside of tech. So it could be the way that you're designing a user experience of someone walking into a hotel or... When I come into like the Holiday Inn, the Marriott, whoever the hotel is, when you say I walk in the door, are you saying how the door is open and whether the guest registry is on the left or the right? 
The yeah. concierge on the left or the right? Yeah, everything. And okay. the people as well. So let's, Amazon's a good example. Okay. So user experience design, first and foremost, is the way that you're moving through their website, how they make it easy. You can click to order in one click. But it's also the experience that you have when you open up your package or the experience that you have when you call their customer service hotline with an issue. Mm. So user ex experience design ideally is stemming through every single touch point that a customer has with a company. That's very clear <laughs> and very detailed. And so that's the industry that you're in now. Yes. Okay. So if someone wanted to hire you, where could they reach you? Because you're doing contract work, correct? Yes. Okay, so tell us a little bit about who would want to hire you or a person like you and why. So I do a very specific part of user experience design in that I focus on the research portion and actually less on the design portion. Okay. So what I found is that I love the human interaction and I like to learn more about people's motivations, needs, and wants in a product. And then I like to synthesize that information across many people and present it in a way to a company that they can make design choices based on their users. I also do a lot of workshop facilitation mm -hmm. and education. So you teach people how to get into the industry. Yes, yeah, so I teach people how to be user experience designers in a couple different settings, and I also facilitate workshops for companies to help level set, help them understand user experience, and also make decisions during their discovery process of what they're gonna be designing and who they'll be designing for. And you can find me at Brittany dot posternock p-o-s-t-e-r-n-o-c-k at gmail.com i should also spell my first name because it's <laughs> not normal either um b-r-i-t-t-n-e-y that's not normal no <laughs> that's just why i call you bb just in case <laughs> it's my normal okay well good well yes yeah, so what would your ideal contract or position be yeah i'd love doing basically any research, qualitative research, so doing user interviews, talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, or facilitating focus groups to solve a problem, or rather just find out the goals and motivations of customers. Well, great. Well, thank you. That is definitely something that I did not know existed. Well, no, I did, but I didn't know as much as I know now after visiting with you and when you started down your journey into becoming a user experience design. Er. Er. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what would you tell your younger self then? That's my whole wrap-up question on the podcast is what would you tell your younger self? Sure. So this is something that I've been trying to really – focus on for the last year or so. And that is, if there is something that you feel inside you are interested in, just try it. It doesn't have to be a permanent solution. You might find that you don't like it, but just by trying new things and things that you genuinely inside feel like you're interested in, new doors will open up and new possibilities that you didn't even know existed or that you would like will start to present themselves so that's what you're telling your younger self right now because you just said you've been working on it yes. so every time you have the urge or you feel like hey i want to try that you just go and you try it yeah totally like if i think i'm interested or i know that i like putting floral arrangements together you're try it i'll go take a class or maybe even find a part-time job doing that yeah. and just see where it goes and that's something that i wish i would have recognized even back in high school and college because i put so much pressure on myself to have this permanent career when you got out. yeah and without trying just little things that i was interested in you thought the pattern was go to high school go to college and have a great career but um here we go is that what you were thinking yeah but and i also didn't know what that looked like for me yeah nobody I nobody does i think that's just life in general you know there might be a smaller percentage of the people that absolutely know and when they get out of college they go do that but i think it's just a you learn as you go always keep on learning yeah and i think there's a large portion of people or at least this is what i did is like i always felt attracted to something mm -hmm. but i just kind of like smushed it down like oh i'll never be a designer uh -huh. 
you know, I saw all my friends doing it. Not all my friends, but some of my friends. And I was envious of what they had, but it didn't occur to me that I could actually have that too. Just to go out and try it, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Well, good. Well, good for you, BP. <laughs> <laughs> so proud of you. And thank you for having the courage to come on the show. You know, there are some people that we know are not so courageous, which names will be left anonymous. Left until we finally convince them to yes, come on. Yes, absolutely. But thank you again for joining me today. I appreciate it. And good luck in your new journey and career. Cool. Thank you. And thank you to my listeners. We're growing every week. And search me. Search Kimberly D. Scott to subscribe to my YouTube channel, iTunes podcast. Follow me on Facebook, Insta, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn. And until next week, stay positive and keep growing. Thanks. Yay.